Barra is trying to position GM as the leader in electric vehicles, promising to go all electric by 2035. But right now, Tesla commands nearly 70% of EV sales in the U.S., while GM is only about 6% of the market. Tesla CEO Elon Musk recently trolled GM on Twitter, saying, hypothetically, if they did make lots of electric cars, then they would be the leader. So what do you mean by that when you say you are the leader? When you look at how many vehicles we're going to be able to launch across many segments, that's why by mid-decade, we think we'll be in a leadership position. So you think you can catch Tesla by 2025, 2026? Clearly, that's what we're working from a North America perspective, and we're just going to keep going until we have a global leadership as well. Well, the first inning of this nine-inning game is for us to get to 600,000. We think that'll put us in number two. And then with Tennessee and Kentucky, you know, we really have a chance to, to get to number one. It, it'll depend on the acceptance of those models, you know, that... We are racers at Stellantis. We love competition. The fact that we know... Full portfolio of vehicles and win. And, and we have said that, you know, by mid-decade, we will be selling more EVs in this country than anyone else. Including Tesla. Including Tesla. It wasn't all but last year where GM, Stellantis, and Ford saw a bright future in their electric vehicle lineup, to the point they were calling their shot, thinking they'd catch Tesla by mid-decade. Though I do find it weird the leader in the EV transition, GM, has to play catch-up to anyone. GM has a little over one year left before 2025, and it's not going so well. Reuters agrees. Their analysts published a chart of EV sales per manufacturer along with an article today. The chart shows legacy auto manufacturers struggling to grow their EV segment, even with the overall share of the EV market stagnating for Tesla. The reason Tesla shares might be frozen at roughly two-thirds of the market is what we talk about as shareholders on a constant basis. The media, Wall Street, and Tesla shorts harp on market share amongst EV total sales only, but we see it differently. We see the entire auto market as our addressable market. Eating share of ICE vehicles is what matters, and internal combustion engine vehicles are our competition. We are obviously taking that share, as our EV sales have grown 80% for the first half of 2023. Reuters goes on to say in the article that all legacy automotive is investing billions of dollars into EV and battery plants, but without volume of sales, it doesn't justify the cost of those investments, especially with Tesla outselling all competitors on a 10 to 1 basis, according to S&P Global. We all know the entirety of Tesla's lineup would outsell most any other EV model, but I assume the average Reuters reader might be surprised how well Tesla is doing because of all the bluster the big three CEOs spout off in television interviews, how they're competitive and whatnot. Reuters is seeing some marginal growth for the EV sector, up a few percentage points year over year. Hopefully we can see this rate of adoption increase as the economic environment gets less murky, especially with interest rates. Something I want you to think about is how price cuts may have negatively affected the Tesla stock performance over the last year, but just know from a strategic perspective, it makes sense, and many analysts agree. Cox is referenced in this article stating that growth in EV sales is likely attributable to the increased affordability, but Tesla's playing with its margins to compromise the viability of Legacy Auto's EV investments. The situation is perfect for market dominance. So we may lament the falling market capitalization of Tesla and thus see the decrease in shares value, but you can see the effectiveness of this move by visiting dealer lots and seeing their EVs sit on lots for months. And look at the increasing cost of labor through unionization. The margin pressure that Tesla exacted upon itself is felt by every other maker in the world by a few factors more. The problem is legacy started at single digits of margin, where Tesla started at 30%. To conveniently complement the Reuters article is a new Morgan Stanley note from our analyst friend Adam Jonas, who again highlights the predicament that Detroit 3 faced due to the UAW strikes. Adam starts his note with, In 2019, when the UAW struck GM for six weeks, Tesla's market US share was 1%, and the company was facing significant financial challenges. Today, Tesla's US share is testing 5%, and we expect this to double between two and three years. On our forecast, Tesla's US market share should be larger than GM and Ford combined by the end of the decade. He continues by speaking to the UAW demands. In our view, even before a potential 30-40% to 40 rise in hourly labor costs, we question the ability of the D3 to be able to produce high-volume EVs at a profit. Our medium-term EV forecasts for the D3 are far below management targets. Example, one-third or one-fourth of management's targets, due to a variety of factors ranging from cultural to competitive. Adam feels labor costs are quite similar between legacy OEMs and Tesla, and he adds, the root problem is not the labor costs, but investors need to look at how Tesla can lower their labor costs and constantly grow, which will ultimately lower labor costs further per car. This puts the Detroit 3 in a bind as they cannot do much in regards to cutting those costs. I quote Adam, We don't see a path to profitability at scale in EVs without unusual levels of taxpayer support or other significant strategic changes. End quote. 
Though quite negative on Legacy Auto, Jonas ends a note saying, there are avenues to the Detroit 3 maintaining relevance, but in my mind, those paths don't look too promising. Bringing in Chinese cars? I'd like to see that happen under any type of administration, Republican or Democrat. How about giving up on being the next Tesla? In all honesty, nothing about what they did during their transition is Tesla-like. Direct-to-consumer? Nope. Software-based vehicles? Not a chance. How about manufacturing efficiencies? Never. Ford, GM, and Stellantis, they can buy Teslas and rebadge them if they want to survive. 